So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at Coffee Protect, a Minecraft plugin which, quite literally, makes it so your Minecraft server does not crash. So for those who didn't know, there are actually hacked clients out there that have a crash server option, where the hacked client basically sends a lot of packets to the server, making it crash. Now this plugin prevents that, alongside many more things, like it preventing close to all exploits inside of Minecraft, this plugin will even make duplicating with auction plugins the plugins where duplication glitches are the most common pretty much impossible it is really great and today i'm gonna tell you all about it before we start though do make sure to subscribe to my channel you would really help me out by doing that and also thanks a lot to the developer of coffee protect for sponsoring this video so how does it work coffee protect is a protection plugin it protects your minecraft server from exploits server crashers netty crashers and duplication glitches it also has support for geyser mc meaning that if you allow better Bedrock players inside of your server, this plugin won't be flagging them. So here we got a list with some of the core features. It has an easy to use developer API, it prevents most known exploits, which includes a lot of duplication glitches. Now this plugin goes so far that it even fixes duplication glitches that might occur in other plugins, most notably auction plugins. It is also extremely lightweight and it also renders pretty much any server crasher useless. It will even prevent certain exploits and bypasses passes when it comes to anti-cheats. It has a cool in-game GUI which we will be taking a look at in a bit. It has database support but most importantly it is made with coffee and we all love coffee because it's the only reason I'm productive every single day. <laughs> That's partly a joke. <laughs> anyway, here's a little bit more information on how Coffee Protect actually works. So Coffee Protect decodes the packet before the netty thread touches it. If the packet is good to go, Coffee Protect then passes it through its checks. Each check has its own unique algorithm in order to determine whether or not the packet follows the protocol as it should. Now, when a player attempts to exploit, he will get a violation. When a player reaches the maximum amount of violations, they will be punished by Coffee Protect. Now here we have a little list of exploits. So these are all exploits that will be blocked by Coffee Protect. So anywhere from server crashers to UUID spoofs, invalid books, invalid signs, invalid placements, a lot of exploits that could occur inside of Minecraft, this plugin will fix. Now what's also very good to point out is that this plugin will actually work in every single Minecraft version from 1.8 till 1.20 so it really doesn't matter what type of server you're using you can use this plugin anyway so after joining the game you will see two very important things first of all i need to update my essentials <laughs> second of all you will get a message that says kasasura has joined the server using fabric so it actually knows that i'm using a version of fabric which is true i'm running iris shaders sodium and other optimization mods so it is completely right on that front now when we type slash coffee protect and then menu you will get a small little menu where you can see and change a few things so first of all we got the checks then we have the settings and last but not least the player logs so the player logs are completely empty right now. But as soon as a server crash or something in that nature would occur, it would actually pop up here. Then checks is basically all the checks that Coffee Protect will perform. So we have the invalid item check, the invalid packet check, invalid window click, invalid position, packet limiter, and the list goes on. There are a lot of options here. Now you can actually enable or disable these checks by just clicking once. So like you can see, now the invalid packets is disabled. Then we also have a few things under settings so once again the list goes on disable null address disable uuid spoof disable packets disable map tracking disable vehicle disconnect disable invalid teleportation now they also all have a description so it will actually say what this particular setting does in this case redstone should we prevent certain exploits with redstone redstoners out there might know about a few exploits with this option enabled that is not possible anymore so these are all settings you can completely customize and change yourself when you type slash coffee alerts you can enable or disable alerts but i think in general it is pretty handy to know when someone is actually trying to crash your server for example although it will all appear in the logs so don't worry if you miss it now this this is actually really funny it also has a crash command so what does the crash command do well basically if you have a player that's trying to crash your server then you will get alerted by it you can actually crash a player's clock so I actually don't know if this will 
will work on myself, but I'm gonna try. Slash coffee protect crash Kasasara. <laughs> it totally works! How does that work? Uh, by the way, you see nothing now. That's because my Minecraft just crashed. It, it, it's gone now. <laughs> That is so cool. Now, the last thing we're going to take a look at before ending this video is the config. So inside of your plugins folder, you simply want to look for the coffee protect folder. And inside of there, there should be a file called config.yml. Now, inside of that file, you can change a ton of settings. So you can change the server name. Should alerts be toggled on join? Cache interval? Should alerts be sent to the config? All of that basic stuff. Then over here, you got the Discord settings. So if you know a little bit about Discord bots and webhooks, you can actually hook this plugin into a webhook and make it send alerts to your discord server too so on discord you will get an alert if someone violates some kind of rule on your minecraft server that is awesome then over here you got the logs so should we enable logging at all of course you want that of course then also how should it be saved so should it just be saved in a yml file or should it be sent to a mysql server for example if you want that then you can specify your mysql server here then you also got the client settings so should an alert actually be sent when someone joins with a non-vanilla client and you saw that happen you saw a notification appear that i joined using fabric which is a non-vanilla client so this is actually really handy and good to know which players are running a vanilla version of minecraft and which players are using some kind of not vanilla client then over here you can put in banned clients so the cm client is banned if there are more clients you want to ban so for example you want no one to be able to join your server at all with for example forge or fabric or maybe any hacked client then this is where you can specify that so if i would put fabric here then i would not be able to join my own server anymore i would not be allowed in then here you got all sorts of settings which part of these we've actually seen in game so the invalid vehicles for example the invalid player status the maximum projectile velocity close inventory on chunk unload so this would actually prevent things like for example duplication glitches and there's just there's a lot here to go over if you decide to purchase this plugin for yourself i would highly recommend going over all these settings and see what applies to your server and what you might want to change over here we also got to disable commands you can see there are a lot of commands here all the plugin commands version commands a lot of bucket commands as well multiverse commands so even if you're not using multiverse the multiverse commands are just here and if you want to add more to this list you can simply do that over here you can disable invalid teleportation over over here you got some redstone settings including a piston fix you can see how massive this config file is there is so much customization so much stuff you can change now the punishment that is actually quite important so people will make violations when you try to crash a server for example it will obviously not work but you will get one violation now over here you can specify how many violations a player can have and also what should happen when a player surpasses five violations in this case it will be a bond over here we got all sorts of checks so just look over these yourself check what applies to you i would say most of these settings are great by default but if something doesn't work great for your specific minecraft server then you know at least that there's an option to change it there's an option to change most of this stuff because this plugin is extremely customizable anyways that's everything i've been wanting to show you today i really really hope you enjoyed watching if you did do make sure to subscribe to my channel you would really help me out by doing that you actually would and then i will see you in the next one bye bye